Hey, this is Harry Guinness for Tuts Plus. In this tutorial, I'm going to continue my look at Keyboard Maestro. In the last tutorial, we set up this Go to Tuts Plus Simple Keyboard Maestro Macro. So in this tutorial, we're going to dig deeper and we're going to set up the Start Work Macro and the Launch Lightroom on SD Card Macro. Both of these are targeted at launching apps with Keyboard Maestro. First, I'm going to show you what the Start Work Macro does. You can see that the shortcut there is .str. So once I type .str, I'm going to get taken to Byword. It's going to open up and then a Chrome window is going to open up as well side by side. This is my work setup. Whenever I'm writing an article, I'm researching using Google Chrome and writing using Byword. So I'm just going to close out, Command W, Command Q to quit Byword, and we'll close out of that window there. Let's look at what's going on. If I open the Start Work macro here, you can see that it's triggered when the .str string is typed. It also simulates four deletes before executing. This means that the .str I just typed, if I type it into an application like Microsoft Word or Byword, they get removed before anything happens. Once the macro triggers, the first thing it does is opens Byword. That's the writing app I use. I'm just going to open a new action thing here to get the action panel up. I'm using the application control. Sorry, no, I'm using the open and then the open a file folder or application and then selecting Byword for that. Next, I want to open a new window in Byword. However, if I don't wait until Byword has opened properly, sending the command N keyboard shortcut won't do anything. So I'm using a pause until conditions are met and this application Byword is at the front. To do that, I'm using the control flow pause until action. Then once Byword's at the front, I'm sending the command N, which is the new window keyboard shortcut, doing that with the text and then type a keystroke action. Those three will all launch Byword and give me the new window. I also want the new Google Chrome window. So I'm using the Google Chrome control, new Google Chrome window and sending it to Tuts Plus. Once they've all run, both apps are open, but they're not arranged properly. To do that, I'm using some of the interface control actions, in particular, the manipulate a window. With it, I'm choosing to move and resize to the left column. It then inputs all these values that it uses to compute things. The front window in Byword. This moves the Byword window to the left 50% column. The next one does the same for Google Chrome, except that moving and resizing to the right column. In both cases, I can use the front window because it means the most recently opened window, which we've just opened a second ago. This is a really handy macro when you want to start work. You can use it with any sort of applications, any number of applications, and with the move and resize options, you can have them take up full screen, top half, bottom half, or top left, top right, pretty much any combination you could want. If you want to set up email on one side, Twitter on another, for example, you can do just that. I don't expect you to be using both Byword and Chrome like I do, so think about your workflow and then set this up so that it works properly for you. Let's have a look at the Launch Lightroom on SD card workflow now. This uses a situational trigger, which I'm going to be looking at a lot more in the next tutorial. I take a lot of pictures and my camera calls every SD card it uses EOS Digital. I'm using Keyboard Maestro to open Lightroom and open the import dialog as soon as I connect that SD card. To show that, I'm just going to click on Try. Keyboard Maestro is now simulating that, so it's launching Lightroom. And once Lightroom opens up, it's going to send the keyboard shortcut to open the import photos and videos menu. And here we are. 
if the SD card was connected, all the images on it would pop up here, ready for me to import. I'm going to reset up this trigger, so I'm just going to copy EOS Digital so I get it right. Delete that trigger, click plus for the new trigger, and then mounted volume trigger. Then once this volume with exact name, paste EOS Digital, is mounted, it's going to trigger. Once it does, it's using the open action we used in the first macro. It's then using the pause until action, once again to wait until Adobe Photoshop Lightroom is at the front. As you saw a second ago, Lightroom has a slightly long boot up time. So we will really definitely need to wait before sending the shift command I keyboard shortcut, which opens the import dialog. Again, I don't expect you to implement this workflow exactly, but if there's something you connect to your computer that you always use a specific application with, this is a really handy way to trigger it and speed up what you're doing. Thanks for watching. For more on setting these macros up, check out the written post below.